Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. Many of you have collected a bunch of crowns of insights by now, and if you're still unsure on what to spend them on, then hopefully this video will help you decide. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at some of the most recommended talents to crown. First, we need to understand what it takes to crown a character. You need 700,000 Mora, 16 purple talent books, 2 boss materials, various bodily remnants torn from the corpses of all the innocent people and critters you've murdered, and finally, the illustrious crown of insight. Not including the priceless nature of the crown itself or the resin-free enemy corpse bits, in total, it costs around 566 resin worth of boss materials, mora, and talent books to crown a character's talent. The next question is, which talents will give your account the highest spike in power? Generally speaking, when it comes to crowns, you want to spend them on what can provide you the highest spike in damage for your account. Now, I learned quite a bit when trying to math how much damage you gain from crowning a character. Most characters fall under a simple one variable scaling, where the way to increase your talent's damage is by simply leveling up that talent. However, for some characters, you can level up multiple talents to increase their damage, like Hu Tao, Yomiya, and Xiao. And finally, there are characters that do not only scale with talent level, but also their HP stat, like Zhong Li, for example. Let's start with the obvious. First, you might be expecting me to just say, crown your Bennett's burst. Well, let's take a look at what that does. Here we have two common Bennett builds, one for a free-to-play setup at Constellation 1, which puts Bennett at 808 attack with a level 9 burst. This attack buff is bumped up to 847 if you crown him. This provides him a substantial 39 flat attack to any character in your Bennett's field. For my Xiangling with the catch, going from Bennett's level 9 burst to level 10, provides her with 1.87% more damage. Alternatively, going from a level 12 Bennett Burst to a level 13 Bennett Burst provides my Xiangling with a 2.49% damage boost. We will come back to Bennett's Burst later, but this is why surprisingly, Bennett's Burst may not be as obvious as we thought. Next, let's take a look at Xiangling's talent. Xiangling has the standard talent scaling, which is a 5.88% gain in damage from level 9 to 10, and thus a 6.25% damage gain from 12 to 3. We can see that by crowning Xiangling's burst, this will increase her damage by 6.25%, which is much more than Bennett's 2.49%. So now with all that out of the way, now you have some basic knowledge on how talents work. And this leads me to my actual advice for you. The highest priority of talents you should level are your main DPS's main sources of damage, especially if that main DPS is considered a top tier character. Now if your main DPS is for example say Razor, sorry Razor mains but I'm going to use him as an example here, then I'd hold off on crowning our favorite wolf boy's basic attacks. This is because Razor is falling further and further behind the DPS curve. And especially if you're considering switching to a more meta main DPS character in the future, then that crown you spent on Razor would be considered kind of wasted. And when it comes to ranking talent crowning priority, I'm going to use four levels of priority. Level one means that these are top priorities to crown. Level two means you should crown these after you're done with level one priority talents. Level three means you don't really need to crown them, but it's not pointless to crown it. And level four means that I don't advise you to crown this for meta purposes. And of course, the tired trope of do whatever you want, it's a PvE game applies here. And you can triple crown your Electro Traveler and still have amazing results. Let's start off by talking about the main DPS's you should consider crowning, and what abilities of theirs you should crown. Starting off with the greatest of all time, Ganyu. If you use her as a main DPS, your top priority should absolutely be to crown her normal attack. Ganyu's charge shots are so egregiously overpowered that you should be crowning it if you have her and if you use her. Her normal attack deserves a level 1 priority for crowning. Her elemental skill and Q, while both good, only deserve, in my opinion, a level 3 crowning priority as they don't make up the majority of her use cases for being overpowered. Next, let's talk about Ayaka. Ayaka's Q is super busted. You want to crown it as soon as possible, and it's getting a level 1 priority to crown. Her autos and her skill are both decent, and I would give them a level 3 crowning priority. 
Now for Hu Tao. Hu Tao is arguably the most complicated character on this list, not only due to having multiple skills that increase her damage, but also because Hu Tao can be played in many different ways. If you use Hu Tao primarily as a charge attack main DPS character, you should crown her normal attack with priority 1, then crown her E, her elemental skill, with priority 2. And finally, you can crown her burst with a priority of 3 or even 4. If you use Hu Tao primarily as a nuker like I do, you should crown her burst with priority 1, crown her E with priority 2, and crown her normal attacks with priority 3 or even 4. Okay, next for Xiao. Non-Constellation 6 Xiaos should have a level 1 priority for his normal attacks, followed by a level 2 priority for his Q. Fun fact, Xiao is the only DPS character in the game which has his main DPS source scale with two different talents while also having the highest scaling possible, which is 7.59% from 9 to 10. Crowning his normals will make him do 7.59% more plunge damage, and crowning his burst on top of that will make his plunges do approximately 9.45% more damage, give or take a percent or two depending on the weapon you're using. Finally, his elemental skill for non-Constellation 6 Xiaos is a priority 3 talent to level. At Constellation 6 though, his E immediately becomes a priority 1 to crown. Next we have Yomiya. Although Yomiya may not be considered top tier and meta defining, she is complex enough and is also one of my favorite DPS characters, so I figured I'd explain her. Her normal attacks have the rare middle scaling like Hu Tao's and are a level 1 priority to crown. Her E provides another 1.86% damage gain on top of that and is at priority 2 to crown for a Yomiya main DPS. As for her Q, I would throw this one into the priority 4 category, not recommended to crown for meta purposes. There are two more DPS characters I will talk about, and the first one is Eula. Our favorite cryo noble woman has the very rare high talent scaling on both her normals and her burst. In my opinion, crowning her burst is a priority one for all levels of Eula play. This amps up her damage from both her crazy burst and her whole E when you have two Grimheart stacks. As for her normals, if you rely on them and do a lot of damage with her normals, they should be at priority 1 as well. If you don't rely on her normals, like for example I don't, they can be as low as priority 3. And last but not least for me to talk about in terms of DPS characters is Raiden. That's right, I consider Raiden as a DPS character, even though she's also a support character. Anyway, if you use Raiden a lot, you should crown her burst. Her burst is a level 1 priority to crown. As for her E, I put it in level 3 or 4, bordering on no point to crown. But of course you can always crown her for the tiny bit of extra damage. Her normals are definitely in level 4 category. So obviously I can't break it down for every single character like this because that's going to take all day. So we're going to move on from main DPS characters to sub DPS slash supports. We'll kick this off by revisiting Bennett. You might be surprised to hear this, but I would rank Bennett's burst at the top of level 2 or at the bottom of level 1 right after the main damage sources from your main DPS characters. As seen in the earlier example with Xiangling and pretty much any character that Bennett would support, leveling up Bennett's burst provided Xiangling with just 1.88% to 2.49% damage gain, compared to the generally 5.88 to 7.6% damage gain of leveling up your main DPS's primary source of damage. However, once you're done with your main DPS's primary source of damage, Bennett's burst is at the top of the list for recommended talents to crown after that. Next is Xiangling, and we're gonna go a little faster here. Q is priority level 1 only if Xiangling is your main source of damage, E is priority level 3, and is generally priority level 4 unless you have Constitution 6 Bennett and use Xiangling charge attacks to vape or melt, which can make it a priority level 3 to crown. Next we have Xingqiu, whose Q is at a level 1 priority but only if Xingqiu is your main source of damage. E is at a level 2 or 3 or even 4 priority depending on if you use him to nuke. His normals are of course a level 4 priority. And last but not least in terms of who I will personally talk about is Zhongli. Zhongli is a unique case since he scales with both his HP and his talent levels in terms of his meteor damage. This leads to his meteor having some of the lowest gains in damage in the game. As such, despite crowning it myself, I'd give this a level 3 priority. His E I would consider also to be a level 3 priority because while it does provide a substantial 6.32% increase in durability, this is often unnoticeable unlike more damage. 
So you may have noticed that I didn't talk about Venti, Kazuha, and Sucrose yet. Well, I'm in the camp of believing that the amount of power you gain from investing into their combat stats in comparison to simply investing into Elemental Mastery and Energy Recharge, especially for Sucrose and Kazuha, is simply not worth the investment. However, if you do run Animo Damage focused Venti and Kazuha, then you can consider crowning Venti's Q and Kazuha's E and Aurora Q but I would still personally put those at priority level 3, even if you use them as animo damage characters. Of course, if you just use Elemental, Mastery, and Energy Recharge, then those should all be level 4 priorities to crown. Alright, so that about wraps it up. I did the math for some other characters as well, but you'll have to go look at my messy spreadsheet. In summary, the top priority for crowning should be your top tier main DPS characters that you use. This includes Ganyu, Hu Tao, Xiao, Yula, Child, Raiden, Aika, and arguably Deluke, Klee, Xiangling, and Yoamiya. If your main DPS character is not in this list, then understand that I do not personally recommend crowning them because they are much less future proof than the aforementioned top tier DPS characters. After you're done with your main DPS character's main source of damage, consider leveling level 2 priorities like Bennett's Burst and your main DPS's secondary source of damage amplification like Hu Tao Z, Xiao's Q, etc. I know this was a lot of information, but hopefully you found some of it helpful. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos, ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.